two in our town. Well, I, like, I got at least a handful of things that I wouldn't have thought of, so thanks, guys. Yeah. There you go. Really good. We still need to go to Guitar Center and buy a banjo so we can redo this song. Uh, I've been doing it. Hold on. Oh, oh no. here it is. <laughs> this episode is made possible by our therapy partner, Dirty B. Dirty B. From fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. This is Pod Therapy. Real people, real problems, and real therapists. You can submit your questions anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. And now, broadcasting from the turn, that's Dr. Jim, that's Whitney, I'm Nick, it's time for some pot therapy. Man, if you want to hear about fancy hot dogs, you go down to patreon.com slash therapy, hear all about it. You'll find it It's a, a big foodie bear. episode. We give you all the it recipes. So about and the... our best business ideas, which Jacob ruined. <laughs> <laughs> about the music. Yes. Yeah. I've already started. Oh, this Yay. is great. Um, you just laid down some bass lines? No, no, no. Because <laughs> no. that's not even started. I've got, no, no, no. <laughs> I've got drums. Damn. I've got bass. Jeez, I've look got at you. a few layers of guitar. Wow. Um He already said it to not me. Not only that. You ready for it? Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Wow. I love yes. the polka. Yeah. This is exactly what I was thinking. Uh, that's oh, what I was hoping. Clapping in the background? Uh, yes. Yeah. Wow. That's Laura. That's, that's Laura. Oh, doing she's the, doing the okay, yeah. she's got the She's just applauding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just in rhythm. Yeah. yeah. It's the only way she knows how. Are we voting uh, on this right now? <laughs> <laughs> No, but not only that, but I've got a couple different options. Wow, look at you, man. Um, you really tackled this. I already talked to those two about it at the bar okay. last week. Wow, you but, already uh, had this thing developed? Yeah. No, it's it's in very early stages. We're not okay. waiting on you. It's yeah, a, no, that would yeah. be, it'll never get done. <laughs> uh, very, very rough draft. So I guess that's the thing that I want to know. Like, how involved do you want to be in this? I'd like to be involved. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I love no, your go-get right. attitude. I really, I'm not <laughs> shitting on you at all. I'm really impressed. I really the, question, the question you should be asking is how much do you want him to be involved yeah. in this? Yeah. Question. I would encourage you not to get too far, and then I just, you know, veto the shit because uh, you should probably help I'm not, me in this I'm not, I'm not, DNA part where you're yeah, building no, no, no. it. No, no, no. Nah. Unless you want to just make like a sampler platter, no, and we what can I'm just saying, like play that game. What I'm saying is, is do you want to be involved in playing an instrument yes, on this? Yes, it's not seafood sugar cookie if I'm not in it. I have to have a part of some That's, kind. Okay. How are you? You this know, there's good? no, there's nobody in, in Guns and Roses named Guns. How did yeah. you get fucking drums? Oh, there's samples. Okay. Oh, yeah, we had the I whole mean, talk so, about like, how many members me of this band. I did not realize <laughs> you were this I'll send invested you what I got. or this yeah. good. You've laid down multiple guitar tracks? Yeah. Wow. And the bass, obviously. Yeah. Nick's got nothing but time. <laughs> yeah, really, dude. What the hell? Like, you, yeah. you couldn't make that meeting with Spreaker, but you can no. do this. You do well, yeah, that's during work four hours. Four fucking things. <laughs> during work hours. This is like four in the morning I'm doing this shit. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Patreon.com slash therapy. Uh, none of that Patreon episode will explain what you just heard, but we're considering rewriting the intro music. Uh, it is still being discussed. Oh, no, it's happening. Options are it's, being developed. Yeah, it's happening. It's, it's definitely happening. Oh, Lord. Welcome to Pod Therapy. <laughs> Whether Jim wants it to happen or not, it's uh, happening. God damn it. There are lots of things on this planet that happen, even though the Jim doesn't want them to. <laughs> this is true. That's true. I don't have a say in a lot this of shit. This is just another one on the list. Yeah, most things on this planet happen without my permission. So and another enough. one down, another, another one, one down, down, another, another one, one on the list. Dust. Oh, <laughs> Trouble connecting with my partner's son from Anonymous. Hi there. I, my pronouns are she and her, have been in a serious relationship with a man for almost two years now. He's divorced with an 11-year-old son and has 50-50 custody. For the first couple of months of interacting with the son, everything was pretty smooth. We got along really well, uh, and all three of us would hang out a lot. I was careful to give the boy lots of attention and make it clear that I was interested in him as a person and not just there to be with his father. We've also hung out one-on-one -on -one a handful of times, and it's been swell. Recently, however, he's been acting out and calling some of my actions mean. Examples, not buying him a game at GameStop or getting him ice cream. And also engaging in more subversive behavior. Examples, overtly disobeying his father, specifically in my presence. An important piece to note is that his mother is a very emotionally unstable person who, though I have never met her, absolutely detests me and actively speaks against me. She's in a relationship of her own, which I know her son has verbalized difficulty with his mother's new partner. It feels, uh, it feels as if it feels it has become more, uh, let's go with it feels as if it has become more difficult for me to connect with the son, but I truly want to invest in a relationship with him. I understand he's going through so much right now, and none of this is personal to me, 
but it's still very difficult and painful. I feel I'm investing very much with negative results. Do you have any advice for how to connect with this kiddo against the chaos and also take care of myself through it as this is incredibly stressful? Thank you all for the work you do. Thanks, Anonymous. Okay. Have any of you ever dated anybody with kids? No. 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 I was married at 19. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. So, that's not 20 what he asked. Asked. That's I mean, I could have. It's a good point. It's a good that, point. Uh, could have. Yeah. So uh, in high school, I dated a teacher. She had kids. So yeah, there right. was that. <laughs> that no, counts. I haven't. Uh, By dated, he means attended math class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that. I was like, this sounds really she You know, she'd write more on my grades than yeah. she needed to. Yeah, yeah. You were able to read between the lines. Yeah, I was able to read <laughs> you know what she meant by that smiley face. <laughs> I know what D means. <laughs> yeah. I know what you're looking for. That teacher was, was always giving Jim the D. She was always giving me the D. It worked out great. Jim, no, for the love of God, what is it I have partners? Right. Who knows? Have you, Nick? I have. What news this oh. Man? You dated somebody with kids? Uh-huh. Okay. I have been an 11 year old yeah. in a divorce family, though, so I feel like yeah. from that okay. perspective, oh, okay. but go good, on. Good well, I, I, I think the important thing to keep in mind here, writer, is number one, I, I think you're already doing kind of a lot of the things that I would tell you to do, which would be to kind of disconnect your emotional reaction from Mm. kind of the logical parenting part because it sounds like you're doing a really good job parenting and co-parenting. And I think the emotional piece I definitely get because, you know, he, as you said, is going through a lot and will be taking that out on you. Yeah. And part of that is just being the position you're in as dating his father. But then the other part of it too, is that, He's 11 years old. Yeah. And this is I just going to get gonna worse. I was just going to say that. Yeah. Some of that's just natural <laughs> yeah. progression. I mean, it isn't going to be better when he's yeah. 13. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, got a few yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and least. so, I, I mean, and I think, like, best case scenario, parent, kids at that age to their biological parents are just assholes. Right. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so part of that, I think you're doing a great job of... You know, when he's like, oh, that's mean that you won't buy me this right. PlayStation 5. And you're just yeah. like, okay. okay. And you just move on without right. like taking the emotional right. hit. And I think part of this is just kind of, kind of imagining yourself when this happens, imagining this, uh, I guess, verbal abuse <laughs> that you're taking. Yeah. Imagine it as, a, as like he's actually throwing a rock at you. Mm. And just kind of imagine stepping off to the side and just let that go right on by. Yeah. And then you just jump back into being a parent. Right. And really kind of visualize this when he says stuff to just kind of disconnect the emotional reaction piece to you still care about this kid. Right. You're still there. You want to, you know, you understand he's going through a lot and you want to be there and support but, uh, I mean, I don't really have a whole lot more to offer other than that because I think you're yeah. already doing the things you need to do. is a good for strategy. For the most part, yeah. yeah. I like that strategy. Yeah. And it sucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. definitely. It it's, really it's does. acknowledged, like, it sucks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's what I'm saying. Like, even in the best case scenario, yeah. if you were the biological parent and, and this is your kid, it's, man, like, working with teenagers is, it's tough. I, I was, I mean, especially. I was, yeah, and I, I mean, I was a, foster parent for two kids now the two kids that i had they were both 17 so yeah. like by that time they'd already gone through a lot of the they have their own craziness. goals and know how to like <laughs> chill out a little to get what yeah. they want yeah like, and they, they would were, just like to be left alone yeah, yeah still teenagers but they had a little bit of logic yeah. so you could still kind of connect a little bit to that logical part of the brain mm-hmm. but there were still times where there was like verbal attacks and stuff yeah. and like things that they would say like intentionally because oh, like yeah. tr- to try to get under my skin but it's almost kind of like when you know the game, it's it doesn't bother you as much, right? Yeah. You know, because like, like, point. like yeah. play the game with him, like, yeah. Because it's, yeah. like, it's okay, you can throw the like, rock. And... Oh yeah, I see what you're doing there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and just kind of play. You're gonna along. eat all five dozen eggs of those, Foster Daddy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I am. laughs> yeah. That's how Watch I get me. Large. <laughs> yeah. So you were an 11 year old child mm. in the home of divorced parents. Yeah, and I- parents started dating. Yeah, so I And was, knowing how hard it is to get along with you as an adult. Yeah. I can so only difficult. imagine. We all experience yeah. wine Ever since I started dating your mom, <laughs> I feel like you have just <laughs> been such a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! The movie that I watch every the teacher. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, 
movie I watch every Christmas is Four Christmases. Yes. Oh my God. There's a I just dynamic. Wanna, I just want to be your friend. Yes. You were my friend. You were my I friend. started dating my mom. Yes. <laughs> He's like, was, do you need some gas money? No, I make more than you do. <laughs> He's a lawyer. Trying to be his dad. Yeah. The first time I saw that, that came out, I had no idea that that was what was being set up. And so I just lost my shit. I was laughing so hard at that. <laughs> okay, that you know what I scene. love about that scene, though, too? She calls him Bradford, and his name is not even Brad. He changed it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. sorry. <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, I was 11 when my uh, dad and stepmom got married, and they're still married today. So uh, that dynamic was a little difficult because my stepmom's very um, particular. And so uh, when we were growing up, like, sh- our their home was always beautiful, like immaculately decorated, but um, you didn't want to like touch anything. Mm. So um, it made it hard to be a kid in that yeah. um, environment, more so for again my ADHD younger brother. But um, <laughs> do but, not touch anything. Oh what? yeah, yeah, it was hard. <laughs> um, but as an adult, we really reconnected probably in my like early twenties, and um, that it's been great. She's. I love her to death. She's like a really good friend of mine, you know. So were you a sassy like youngster though? Did you go through it? Cuz I would imagine for a kiddo going through mm-hmm. this to relate to the writer's situation a little bit. I mean, it's tough as a kiddo because I don't know what to do with you. Right. You're not my mom, you're right. not my dad, you're not a teacher, mm-hmm. you're not my friend, but we're friendly and like you're trying to like play video games with me and hang out with me and you're very mm-hmm. nice to but me. But your parents still involved. You but aren't like yeah. replacing a mom. And or... then I have a mom and she doesn't like you and she mm-hmm. like asks me questions about you and yeah. like I feel weird being your friend or liking you in her presence. Yeah. It's just a really tough spot to live. Yeah. Um and I think some of that again bio parent or step parent um I have friends, clients all the above family <clears throat> who struggle through these horrendous years. Mm. Um, but what I like to share with all of them is uh, mostly just an opinion of mine, but I think it helps is that um, when kids are going through this stage and they start acting out, I remind them that the fact that they feel comfortable acting out to you mm. means that you are a safe person. Interesting. The people that they're going to behave the best for are people they don't know how they're going to respond. They don't know if it's safe to react or okay. show their emotions. Yeah. So it's almost like a different way to shift the mindset instead of, oh, my gosh, they're being so rude and disrespectful and ungrateful and all the things that they are probably being. <laughs> um, right. It's more like, yeah, they probably have feelings about this mom and, you know, his mom and um, the new, new partner. partner yeah. And they can't express it there, it sounds like, if she's just bitching about you. And well, mom's emotionally <clears throat> unstable. So and emotionally like, unstable, yeah. You're not getting parented over there. So in a lot of ways, like, if he can can act out around you, it's kind of like, a compliment, yeah. <laughs> a direct compl- compliment. Yeah, but, that's a good way to kind of reframe that. Yeah. I like that. I think that I agree with both of you in the sense that let's normalize the fact that the era this child's going through probably already implies that we're going to have some of this behavior. I think also the abnormal circumstance of not knowing what to do with you. You have a couple of years logged, but like it's been a traumatic couple of years for this kid. So defaulting to friend, I think is a really great one. Like looking for that friendship when it's available, trying to teach the kid, Hey, I'm here for you. Like I care about you. I'm not trying to replace anybody. I'm just a, I don't know. Like, you know, I, I, I exist in your life yeah, and I like you independently. And just, I don't know, even coming to the kid at some point and saying like, like, and that's something I think you can do in this position that a parent can't always do. Like if one of my kids acts sassy to me or just like is defiant to me or whatever, if I come to them after like their little temper tantrum and I go, hey, buddy, Mm -hmm. you feeling all right? Earlier, you know, I kind of thought, are you mad at me? No, no. Early, I'm still your you dad. Little, you can give two fucks. Ass hat. Yeah, you were really a dick earlier. Are we cool? Like, <laughs> they're not going to look at me like, hey, that was weird of me to treat you badly. No, I'm their dad. They'll just keep treating me badly. Yeah. But like, if, you know, you were rude to like my adult friend who's like a good friend of ours or our neighbor or like an uncle or something like that, an uncle would walk over to you and be like, hey, man, earlier you kind of blew up on me. Did I say something wrong? Are we cool? 
Mm-hmm. And like a child would feel the sense of like, yeah, it was weird that I did that. Right. So they'd be like, no, man, I'm sorry. Like I've been grumpy. So I think you actually have that sort of adjacent sort of uncle aunt position to sort of come in and ask that question of like, yeah. Hey, earlier, you know, you seemed upset that I didn't buy you that ice cream and stuff. Are we cool? Like, I hope you understand why. Yeah. And he's old enough that you might try that reasoning voice. Yeah. Like that kind of like older you friend or uncle aunt. You could start asking that at least. And like I think you might get away with like, oh, let's talk. Are we cool? Mm-hmm. So I think you get away with that. Also, default to video games. If you haven't yet, figure out what kind of video games this kid's into. Get really good at those video and games. Play and with them. Whoop his ass. Oh, I was yeah. like, play with That's them while they talk. That's how you get respect. Jim, no. whoop his ass. <laughs> you whoop his ass. <laughs> that and is you a technique, Take out though. all of your aggression <laughs> right there. Like he's playing Call of Duty. He's headshot his so ass. So this is interesting. As soon as he spawns, right in the dome. It's interesting because as you were talking, the thing that, that you said that I was just kind of like, I don't know. Do you want to really do that? That I kind of questioned you about uh-huh. was the, hey, are we okay? Or, you know, I, I, I. You know, you're upset that I didn't buy you this video game. Or are we okay? And the thing that kind of, and I'm not saying you're right or wrong. Um, the listeners can decide. Uh, <laughs> Fate will <I> decide. Think, <laughs> but the thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way about that was almost kind of like, you are in a position of authority in yeah. a sense. I don't think you are. Yeah. I don't think you'll play those cards. No, I know, but let, let me finish though. Okay. Let me finish though. Nope. At some point. Can I finish? At some point, <laughs> she was shy. She, sorry. At some point, <laughs> you're gonna have to parent. No, but go on. What do you? Why, yeah, do you, you know. why wouldn't you not? You haven't earned that spot. That's not been given to you. Don't it has, try to assume no, that. No, no, no. Earning and given are two different things. Yeah. It has been given to you. No. Yeah. I don't think you, it, has. it definitely has. The writer has not assumed that. The writer is not taking that spot. So I don't see anything in that okay. letter. The writer sees himself as a parent. No, but hypothetically, if this relationship continues, yeah, then they're gonna be that parent. Yes, there's, also, there's like, no sp- way that they can't be that parent. If you're right. spending one-on-one time with them, yeah, like, that if you, was interesting. If you have one-on-one time with a babysitter, that babysitter is doing part of the raising of that child. So, like a, a, a new spouse, a, a new uh, significant other for a parent, like they're involved in raising the kid, right? So like yeah, That's fair. like you can call it parenting, you can call it whatever verb you want to call it. Yeah, but like there's they're a, doing it. They're they're doing some of that raising. There, That's true. There is going to be at some point a power dynamic. Yeah, where the kid yeah. and her are not going to be on the same level. This is true. You're right. Yeah, that's why you don't want to just be a friend. Yeah, and so yeah. that's why I was kind of thinking like you know when you check in with them to be able to check in, and I would. If if I was in this position, I wouldn't say, "Hey, are we okay?" Mm-hmm. In the sense, I would say, "Hey, you know, you seemed upset. Is there something you want to talk about?" Yeah, yeah, I, like yeah. That. I would approach it that way. I'm but fine I, with that. I wouldn't ask permission or no. ask, "Hey, are, are we? we okay?" Because right. then I feel like then now it shifts the power dynamic to now the kid gets to decide the stability of the relationship, right? right. As opposed to find be level or or have a little bit more power, but don't give the kid the authority or the power to be able to decide, no, we're not okay. Yeah. If you're going to be in this family, if you're going to be dating my dad, right. then you need to buy me these video games. Like that's I'd, how you want, might have I'd that. want to hear that. I'd want the kid to say it if fine, that's on their mind. Fine, but then I, but I, I, I think there's ways that you can have that discussion without the kid establishing dominance over. I, okay, the writer. so I definitely receive the notes. I don't, yeah. I don't know that I see it as a. I think you're making the wrong move. If your goal is to establish dominance and power. Now, here's where I'm coming from on that. Okay. As a teacher. Like headshotting Whenever I was a high school teacher. Do that. No, fuck him (laughs) up. That's how you get get respect. Okay? If you can't beat that kid in COD, you don't give a shit about you. As a teacher, this this was a thing you'd have to do with students because you couldn't just come in and lord over the fact that you can discipline them all the time. Because if they're already being unruly, I would lose that. I would, it just becomes a game of chicken and I will lose because they're willing to escalate to whatever. And all I can do is RPC them. And so the, I had to use different dynamics to, to get management, classroom management back. And that would be one of them was wait for them to cool and then come to them and go when they're not around their peers and say, you know, Hey, earlier today, you, I was trying to get control of the classroom and you seem to kind of be crossing swords with me. Are we okay? Yes. And I would do that to call them out on their behavior. 
in a way that called them into the conversation. Yes. I'm totally on board with all of that. I agree. And that's not exactly what I was saying. Oh. I'm not saying that you're going in here to a stat to start a pissing match and to establish dominance. That should not be your goal. But I think it would be I think it would be bad <laughs> to, like to pretend it, it doesn't exist. <laughs> right. To pretend that, I'm not in charge. No, like pretend to pre- pretend that a power dynamic doesn't exist. Yeah. I, I think you have to acknowledge that it does. I don't think you need to go into it with the idea that I need to establish dominance. Right. I think you need to go into it with the understanding that I already have a position of authority. So what and would so you I say And so I can't then? pretend, again, I think exactly what I said before, which is I think we can have this conversation of like, hey, you seemed really upset. Is there something you want to talk about? Something you want to do? Yeah. You know, all that. I, the thing that kind of rubs me the wrong way is asking the kid if we're okay because then I feel like it. you're putting the power on the kid to decide the health of the relationship. Well, That's I, the part, part I, that I, I agree think with that. just kind of, okay. I don't. I, I want to interject. I almost feel like when you repeat it, it's not like you're putting the power with the kid, but it's more of an insecurity. Like it might be sending the message like, are we okay? Like you might not be okay. Right. So you're asking the kids. So, so maybe it's more like an insecurity. I, oh, I agree vibe with that. I think, you're, I think you're saying the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I, agree. I think as soon as you as soon as you like show that insecurity, then the kids you like, are oh, shifting we, the we power dynamic okay. to the kid. Like, but yeah. you're, you're coming, I agree, but yeah. that's why I'm doing it. So yeah. I'm showing vulnerability so that you understand that you affected me. Like you being a dick, it, it like you just being a dick for the sake of being a dick is affecting another human being. I'm trying to establish a relationship with you. So if I come to you and I go, hey, man, are we cool? Like, what happened at the ice cream store? For those of you who I'm think that Jim vulnerable. is talking out of both sides of his mouth with the with this part and the Call of Duty uh, <laughs> oh, that part's dominance. True. Yeah, that's right. Uh, shoot him in the you're head. You're right. You're, in the you're video right. game. That's the one the way game, to show. Shoot him in the head. Definitely beat him on, <laughs> in the video game. No, I, I want to express vulnerability. I want you to see me as a human. Because And that's one of the fastest ways to get a kid to question their behavior. Because when they temper tantrum and they do this bullshit, they're dehumanizing other people. They're acting like they're the only fucking person that matters. But whenever you can get them calm, and then you come to them later, and you say, like, hey, you know, what was that about? Are we okay? Like, did I do so-? – now you're humanizing yourself to them where they have to think about how they treated you. And if they see that you're crestfallen or you're affected by it, that, that weakness, which I am absolutely showing, that vulnerability humanizes me to the other person. This is a child that's old enough to have that conversation and take accountability for what they did. And if you can't get them to take accountability by showing them what you did was wrong, and I'm not talking to you again until you tell me why, because that shit's not going to work. That pushes them away. You're showing them your humanity so that they'll come to you and go, yeah, sorry I blew up on you, Nick. Um, I don't know, man. I guess I just want ice cream. I, sorry. You're making it weird for them. And that's what I want to do. I want to make it weird enough by showing that vulnerability so they have to question the behavior they just did because I'm a human and we need to continue to treat each other like humans. Yeah. I, and I get that. I just the, It's a method. I don't know if it would work for everybody. In my dynamic, it would work. I, I think it sounds like a one word difference is all I'm hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I, I think like... I, I think what you said, I think you nailed it with the insecurity part. It's like I, I get the point of like demonstrating, hey, yeah, the way that your actions, your actions have effects on other people. Yeah. What you do, what you say can hurt people. The thing that I, that just kind of rubs me the wrong way just a little bit would be the idea of me being insecure and me needing you. Mm. Me, I need you, the kid. To to things. make me I feel better okay. mm-hmm. about this relationship because you made me feel you hurt me when you said this. Now I need you to say it's okay so that I can feel better. I think puts a lot of power on that kid mm. and gives them a lot of power. If they're responsible, sure, maybe they would say like, "Oh yeah, okay, I kind of understand this." I could also see that going too far the other way, where now the kid's like, "Oh shit, I've got a lot of power here." I can actually, I can use this to my advantage. Maybe. You know? Most kids don't like knowing they've hurt somebody. And so whenever you reveal that, hey, what you said earlier hurt my feelings, are we okay? No, uh, I'm, I... I'm fine with what you said earlier hurt my feelings. Cool. Yeah. I don't like, I can't feel better until you give me permission to feel better. Are mm. we okay? That The are we okay part is the part that. Okay. That I, so just that... rhetorical approach. Yeah, because again, I feel like what that's sent, it's the message that's being sent to the kid is I can't move on until you tell me hmm. it's okay for us to move on. And that's the part that 
I'm not really sure. I kind and of I also I, I, like Jim's Jim's point about not earning the the right to parent. I think that's just wrong. Mm-hmm. I, I I really do because like at you're, some the, point the kids, you're given it. I agree with the you kids. Guys. Parent is giving you the right to parent. If the kid if, if the kid's parent is, is bringing you into that uh, home situation, leaving the kid alone with you, giving you those responsibilities, that parent has given you that right to parent. Yeah, I think like just it, just it having sex with somebody, just having sex parenting. with someone, it doesn't give you a magical right to parent. Like you're just parenting, you're just well, doing it, you're just doing the job. I mean, in my experience, I I dated one person. She had a kid, and uh, kid was female. I want to say nine years old. We were together for like three months. We dated. I you never had the kid. <laughs> Jesus, Nick. I never disciplined that kid. Right. I, 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 I never took on parenting responsibilities. Right. However, there were times where like I like mom was off in the kitchen doing something. So then like I had to say like, okay, the kid's in danger, you know? Right. So I can't say like, don't, oh, yeah, go ahead. Play run with right. the scissors. You I know, don't like, see that as I parenting. To, I see no, no, no. That as yeah. And it was, responsible it was, adult. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was more responsible adult where yeah. you're kind of like redirect and not like, right. Hey, stop it or knock it off. But like, right. Hey, why don't we do whatever, whatever. And why don't you put the gun down? You know, whatever right. it is, you know that, right. like you kind of have to redirect the kid. Are we okay? Would, Cause <laughs> you having that gun makes me feel like we're not okay. <laughs> Maybe we're not okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I think oh. parenting to me, that word is maybe different than, than how I'm putting it in the room. Maybe. I guess. Because parenting is a, is a relationship. Like I, if I'm going to take on the persona of parent to you, that's something that I think happens slowly. I think it is earned in relation. I think that we do that together. I can assert myself and mm-hmm. just assume the role. Um, but then I've also seen an awful lot of people that have an awful lot of resentment to the step parent or to somebody mm-hmm. who just sat themselves upon the throne. Sure, sure. Because yeah, your father's dick has been in me, so now I'm I'm the one. And it's like, no, no, there is something that needs to be done here with a slow. Did we get that drop? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. A, a no, that's slow there. kind of like yeah. earn this agreement between us. Because if you don't have it, this consent of the governed shit matters in, in in children's lives. You've already mm-hmm. got a child that's rebelling, doesn't give a fuck about anybody's authority coming in and establishing more of it isn't going to be what changes their tune. You need to have a different approach. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking um, about if the kid is 11 and starting this pattern, it would be a great time to sit down and discuss together, you know, with the partner, what parenting looks like or what those boundaries are. are Oh, that's a, I I like that a lot. Actually talking, talking to the, to the dad, right? Yeah. Yeah. The dad. Yeah. Talking to the dad and be like, what do you want me to do with this kid? Oh, always. Yeah. Proceed with caution. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, For sure. And then bring the kid in once you've established with your, um, with, are they married? (laughs) And with your new partner, Partner. then together partner Yeah, with your partner, uh, sit down and ask him first and then bring in the son and say, Hey, uh, you know, ask them what they think, because a lot of times kids, when they're in charge and control of some of those like rules and boundaries, then they'll follow them. I like that. So, yeah, Yeah, no, I completely agree. This is, this is the angle I think is the right approach is involving the kid with direct communication about the behavior and about yeah. what's going on and about our relationship. Yeah. We've noticed you know? this has been, I'm noticing that issue. this is happening. Let's talk. This is about how that. it affects me. You can right. share that this too. This is how yeah. it affects me. I felt, you know, hurt by this and I was trying to be kind to you today. And I felt like I was, you know, did I upset you to calling them in, I think is the, the way you get this like mutuality. Mm-hmm. Otherwise I think if you just come in and try to say I'm in charge or something to that effect, it, I, I just think that, you don't catch them. Like, yeah. I've just not won over a lot of, like, obedient children in my life by doing it that way. I was going to say last she said, how can I take care of myself through this? And uh, I feel okay she's saying this because I've heard uh, Jim and Nick share the same. But if you have a friend you can trust who isn't one of those friends who, when you start sharing stressors with, they just, like, rile you up. But more like they're somebody who's a good sounding board or that sort of thing. Um, when my friends have gone through this... They will call me and be like, oh, my God, my kid's being a little (laughs) shit, whatever, (laughs) like just to vent. And then they're like, I know what I got to do. They usually recenter after that. And they're Mm -hmm. like, I know that's not me. It's this and da, 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 da. They're like, all right. And then they can go back in the game and be like, 
I'm okay. But yeah. if you have someone like that, it might be something helpful you could try. You need a locker room with a coach that can give you a pep talk. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Like to coach give Carter. You, to mm. be yeah. able to give Samuel you. Jackson suit and tie. <laughs> yeah. Why we're going out in yeah. the second half. Yeah. Like, yeah. One foot on the bench, yeah. leaning in. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I love it. Great question, writer. And a lot of people relate to this. I mean, you know, blended families, step roles, you know, all these kinds of things. Very interesting to do. Um, good to, ideas about boundaries, good ideas about tiptoeing, defaulting to kindness, and then appreciating that this is what it looks like, yeah. even if you're the biological parents. It really um, does suck, like Jacob said. Yeah, it just, really does. You just sign, this is what you, it is. You give and give and nothing is given back, right. hardly, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> but way to, way to care about the kid, by yeah. the way. It's so easy to just get resentful and just be like, F this, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. I don't care about this kid anymore. And, like, that's super cool that you're trying. So way to keep trying, but... Awesome stuff. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about seeing a new therapist. You're listening to Pod Therapy. Today's episode is brought to you by Smitty Scoop, Nathan's Hot Dog Scoop, Mason Miller, Tess Miller, Dirty B, Byler T, Paris, Team Monaco, and Oscar Saranros. Wish I was an Oscar Would you like to sponsor the show? Become a therapy producer. Patreon.com slash therapy. All right. This week's trivia. By the way. Garth Brooks' song lyrics was a hit. It was. Oh, good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That could be a whole new trivia tree. Yeah, we could just continue. Just finish these lyrics. I'll tell you who the artist was. Go. I want to do uh, boy band lyrics. Oh. We could do a whole thing on that. Okay. That would be solid. I would love that. You know what would be really hard is name the boy band. Oh gosh, yeah, it would be. I wouldn't know. Like always, ninety eight degrees. So yes, that's it's O A R. There's so many. Okay, well, I'll have that ready for next week. <laughs> uh, this week is a pulpery, but we're doing a uh, Price is Right version. All hey, right. Can you say oh. that word again? Pulpery. Yeah. What one does more time. That mean pulpery. So, so can you spell that for me? No. Is are you saying pulp? Is. Pulpery. Pulpery. I, I don't know. I say it fast. Say it again. No. Yeah, you're saying pulpery. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I, I need to know what this is. I don't know why Jim is so hard right now. Nope. Oh, we're all just gonna let this slide. It's the we're tent. all just gonna it's Jacob. The, you're just gonna tent. fucking your double standard son of a bitch. You're gonna let that shit slide. You have eaten me alive for how many times I've said the slightest thing wrong. No, 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 no. The slightest thing being making an e instead of an i in the word pillow. Yeah, and the attribute thing. You know, or whatever it was. <laughs> attribute. Yeah, attribute. Fuck that. Yeah. The, it's potpourri. Potpourri. Okay. okay, fine. Oh, that is what you were yeah. saying. Okay. <laughs> Would you think? It, yeah, exactly. Is that I literally didn't know the word yeah. potpourri. He's saying potpourri. Oh, okay. potpourri. That's okay. what I was trying to say. Potpourri. Yes. I did hear what you it's said. Potpourri. So. Right. Also, I'm also sitting here thinking to myself, I don't know if that word is spelled with an L or not. <laughs> <laughs> like, is there an L no, there? No, it's spelled P-O-T. Yeah. It's it's made of pope. The pope. Potpourri. <laughs> oh, P-O-P-E? Yes. Puri. Well, it's actually pot puri. It's actually pot it's a, par- it's a Parisian pope. Yes. Okay, Parisian go on. Pope. Sorry. Okay. All right, anyway. Sorry. Uh, how long was the shortest war closest without going over? Uh, uh, Do we get multiple choices? We have to throw it Oh, out we there. need to start, figure out who goes first. I'll go first. Okay. I'm done. That's easy to figure <laughs> out. <laughs> we'll go counterclockwise then. All right. I'll take the six-day war. Okay, six days. Oh wait, are we? So we're naming the war or naming the no, time? You don't have to name the war. Okay, oh, six days. Okay, six days. Yeah, that Whitney. The war, I guess five. <laughs> I don't know. Is okay. that is that a good guess? Now, for that uh, means that or what? It's closest without going over. Yeah. So oh, without going over. So if it's less right. than six, um, I don't know. Two. Two days. I guess two. Yeah. One minute, Alex. Ooh. Jacob wins. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was 38 minutes. Yep. Okay. Damn. How? Uh, Zanzibar, Zanzibar okay. versus Britain. Wow. Okay. See, 18, they're colonizing. <laughs> 1896. History major. Yeah, that I helps. thought so. I was like, if I remember, James Zanzibar is surrendered last. after a mere 38 minutes. Wow. Oh, my. Okay. Jeez. What is the longest record? So we'll start with Whitney this time. Okay. What is the longest record for flight of a chicken? Oh, jeez. Assisted or unassisted? Oh, good point. <laughs> unassisted. <laughs> Alive <Yeah>. or dead? <laughs> yeah. Is this a transatlantic well, was a Boeing flight? 777. Yeah. <laughs> was it served? <laughs> the longest flight for a chicken. Um, I don't know. One minute? <laughs> okay. Oh, time. Time. Oh, sorry. Oh, t- uh, oh, that's a good point. It could time be distance, distance, I guess, but I, I was thinking time. It is time. time. Okay, okay. okay. Time. 
So you're saying one minute? I said one minute. It spins around to you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, man, I don't know. <laughs> they didn't cover this in any of my uh, European that history classes. History? Damn it. Poultry <laughs> flight. That's because it was an Asian fun. chicken. I was going to say, is this an Arkansas chicken? <laughs> uh, six minutes. Okay. Damn, man. I didn't think they can't fly, right? So it's got to be as long as it takes to fall. So, I mean, depends on how high the thing was. So Whitney was, what, what were you, Whitney? One minute. Uh, they probably dropped you one under six minutes. Longest flight's going to be off of something really tall. I'm going to say. It she, killed the chicken. Did the <laughs> chicken survive this she, flight? She took a minute? Yeah, yeah. I know. The chicken doesn't survive. I guess I'm going to take 59 seconds then. So that's can, not okay, how that that's, game works. That's really dumb, but okay. Wait, is that is that how it works? Closest without going over. That oh, means, one second. That means oh. Give me one second. 60 one second. seconds, yeah, 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 yeah. you lost. I lost. Right. I did the Give same me one, thing. I was like, one oh, second. Okay. I'll, take, I'll take everything between one okay. and, and 60. There you go. Okay. So you're yes. on one to 59. Yeah. Whitney is 60, 60. seconds up through Just, five minutes and 59 seconds. Yeah, and then yeah. you've got and the over. everything past that. Yeah. Got it. Uh, Jim gets that point. It was 13 seconds. All right. As long as the fall was, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Is it just falling uh, it off of something? It doesn't go into detail. Yeah, it was so. falling okay. off of something yeah. 13 seconds high. All right. I've seen All peacocks right. fly in a very similar manner. Yeah, yeah. straight it, down. It, it fly, they fly long enough to like either get over float, a fence or to get down. over, like <laughs> to get up onto a branch of a tree, Yeah, to get up onto my roof. Gliding somewhat forward. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're one and one. Who got the other one? Whitney? I did. No. no I was like, no, not you me. Zanzibar. Okay. Tie game. I like it. <laughs> I'll take you to Zanzibar. <laughs> Can we do a whole Tenacious D karaoke? I think that I would be solid. D. Seeing a new therapist from Abe. Hi, guys. First, a question in the form of a haiku. In oh, I was just going to give you some bed music for, the, for this question. You know you can't <laughs> sing and have me therapist. not join in. I cannot resist that temptation. Hi, guys. First, a question haiku. A new therapist. Will be in my future soon. First session, how to? I'm Perfect. Ron Burgundy. Perfect. I'm Ron Burgundy. No, really, though, I'm getting ready to start <laughs> therapy in a couple of weeks. I have done a couple of sessions using my EAP at work, but I've found them to be less than helpful. I think my main issues are that one, er, that I was focused on getting. Okay. I think my main issues are they were one focused on getting me to a state where I was better and not diving deep. Arkansas. And two, they both <laughs> wanted me to use CBT. And while I am sure if I remember to use that, it would help me. I never remember to use it. See, I'm ADHD and keeping that kind of thing in my brain just has not been working. So my question, how should I go about having my therapist focused on other methods of helping me? Also, have there been any research into people with ADHD and epileptic seizures? I have a history of both in my life. And if not for the seizures, I would have been put on stimulant ADHD meds a long time ago. Thanks, Abe. Ooh. Okay. It's a good question. I think we've all had this happen where somebody comes in and says, well, okay, during an intake session, Whitney, do you ask like the, have you ever seen a therapist before question? Yeah, I ask it in, sometimes in the consult call every once in a while, but definitely in the first session when we do our assessment. And um, that's usually where I get input. Like, we tried this. Or I didn't like my therapist. Why okay, not? why? Yeah, what, what, <laughs> what was not working? What didn't work? And what did work? And right. so um, a lot of times they'll say, oh, this the way they. My they last work. therapist didn't even have a podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what an they amateur. <laughs> <laughs> it was boring. Yeah. So if someone came in, this sounds very similar to something. Right. Someone would tell me on the first session, like, well. I've tried CBT. I, mm -hmm. I don't care for it. Mm -hmm. Or it. It sounds interesting. I can't remember it. Yeah. Seems like a lot of thinking. So definitely telling the person that you reach out to, maybe even on that consult call, since you don't want to get all the way to the first session. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you, if you go in there and you're like, I think CBT is going to be a waste of my time, so I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're saying, my specialty is CBT. And right. Like, oh, crap. Sure. Now I have a whole session here. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, do you like to fish? <laughs> yeah, right. I have a Real podcast. You can <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I think I agree with you. Just being straightforward and yeah. telling that it doesn't bother us. That's the thing yeah. you need to understand. Yeah. Because people think like, oh, am I telling you how to cook? Like, am I telling you how to do a job? No, no, no. We want to do it a way that works for you. And maybe asking, by you asking, they can say like, oh, what was it you didn't like? Yes. And maybe you just thought. I mean, we're, therapists are all different, yeah. so maybe they approach things differently or whatnot. And you're not going to have a therapist that goes, well, I only use CBT. Right. Sorry. Right. You know, like, what? It's like the Catalina wine was, mixer. Yeah, like, when I was in grad school, Joel. that's what they tricked you into thinking. They're like, don't mix 
you know, oh, yeah. theology or whatever strategies. Yeah. Um, that, that's the worst to do as eclectic. Now I'm yeah. like, mm. <laughs> we all use, yeah, they're just tools in a box. Yeah. yeah. And whatever. So if you want to tell your therapist, Hey, look, I've tried this twice. This is why it didn't work for me. Yeah. I love finding that out. Spell it out for him too. Yes. Like, all the details you can give this new therapist. Oh, spell yeah. it all out. Tell for me why it didn't don't be work. shy about it. Yep. Be like, here's why I don't think it worked. Here's here's my experiences with it. Yes. Give it all to them. Yes. Yeah. No. The more you can tell us, the better. I came across the video the other day of uh, it was an interview with uh, Bill Hader. Oh, okay. Uh, from Saturday him, Night Live. Yeah. yeah. And so he was he was talking to I don't know if some film students or whatever, but people were asking him questions about like. Uh, I don't know, directing, putting together stuff or, or writing. That's what mm-hmm. it was. It was about writing. And um, he said the thing that he's learned is that if he writes something and he shows somebody, say, he, here's what it is, their critique is always right. Their solution is always wrong. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Yeah, oh, so they can so recognize it, the problem. Yes, oh. yes, and so and so if yeah, they're like, oh, you know, this character, I just didn't, I didn't buy this, this, and this. Um, so here's what I would do: is do this. He's like, forget the second part. Just right? hear forget that, that the second part. Whatever you've but got, they're is wrong. right about the first part. Interesting. Okay? And so this kind of reminded me of this too, and I think this would be good advice for most people going into therapy is. If you've been in therapy before with other therapists and it didn't work, I feel like you're 100% right. Whatever mm. your critique is, I think it's you're absolutely right. You may not have the solution for how to fix it. Right. And I don't think it's your job to tell the therapist, the next therapist, Here's how, how to, to fix it. it. Right. I think what you just need to do is come there with... Hey, this is what happened in the last therapy. This is the things that I didn't like. Here are the things that I did like. Here are the things that I couldn't get to work. Let that therapist do the work right. in fixing it. Yes. You're paying them. They might yeah. as well work. Absolutely. Well, I am against work, but I, I do agree with that point. Yeah. Um, one other thing, too, and this is not part of the question, but I do want to I do want to point it out. Uh, because I think this it it I, I kind of say it jokingly, but it I'm actually also very serious, and I think a lot of people need to hear this. Um, Abe, you put in here, I am ADHD and I'd say, no, you're not, you're Abe. Yeah. Yeah. You're not the thing. You're, you are not your diagnosis. Right. And I think a lot of, I think a lot more people need to hear that because we hear, I hear this all the time from people saying like, well, I'm bipolar or I'm schizophrenic or I'm blah, 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 fill in the blank. Well, no, you are an individual. You are not your diagnosis. This is something you have. Right. It's a condition. Right. You know, in the same way that if I had diabetes, I wouldn't say I'm diabetes. Right. You know, I would say I have that diagnosis. I have this condition. Yes. But that's not part of my identity. Yeah. So I'm really like, glad you said that. Yeah. Not 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 part of the question, but I, I did want to take the opportunity to point that out. And this is something that in our six hour deep dive on the topic of ADHD yeah. has discussed at length, which is how <laughs> this has length. become <laughs> at exactly six and a half hours length. How long did you make it, Jake? Uh, he has Are you kidding? <laughs> He's like, I have ADHD. <laughs> Never. No, he just refuses on principle to listen to that. <laughs> no, there's not a chance at hell. He's not in this studio while I am talking. He is not part of the conversation. <laughs> he doesn't want to hear about it. But no, this is something that I think has happened more with ADHD than mm. a lot of other things, yeah. is that I think in, in pop culture, we've started to make it an identity concept, and we're, we're adding all these new words, right? And, and like even phrases like neurodivergent and neurotypical are becoming identifiers, which... I'm I'm comfortable with that in the sense that I believe people living with any condition get to go create subculture and do whatever's helping them. And if if they come up with shorthand as a way to sort of self-identify and discuss and that helps them talk, cool. Mm-hmm. Um but it it is uh, as as an educational podcast, you know, when you talk to experts about it, we're going to say, "Hey, FYI, ADHD is a cluster of symptoms, mm-hmm. not a cause." It, and that's what's very different. We've talked about this on the show before. Cause and effect is different in mental health diagnosis than it is in physical diagnosis. If you have tummy pain and we diagnose you with diverticulitis, the condition caused the pain. In mental health, we diagnose clusters of symptoms. That's what it is. It's shorthand for us to know what we're dealing with. Your anxiety doesn't cause the symptom. Anxiety is the cluster of symptoms that we give a name to. ADHD is a cluster of symptoms. 
we think that there are neurodevelopmental causes to it, we cannot point to that. That's not a clear thing. So anyway, just to underline your point, because I, I agree with that. But anyway. And of course, if you have uh, a spare six and a half hours laying around. That's right. And an ironic sense of humor, <laughs> you can go over to patreon.com slash therapy. And you can listen to the deep dive onto ADHD yes. that will take six and a half hours. Or just skip into topics that you like, because it's broken into four different bits. We don't talk about that enough. It's six and a half hours broken into four bits. <laughs> okay, so they're 90 minute bits. 90. There's an outline attached Even to each 90. one. Oh, 90s are long. <laughs> But there's an outline attached to each episode so you can figure out kind of where the information you're interested in comes. Or just read the outline. You, you don't even – you could just read the outline. I mean, I t- Whitney and everyone listening, <laughs> the, the fact that you guys weren't in the room when I pointed out to Jim that his deep dive into ADHD was six and a half hours long – the fact that you couldn't see his face. Yeah. Is, the shock, is just, yeah, the shock was The evident. shocked realization just, oh, on his face. Yeah, that was a bad idea. Like, maybe I shouldn't was, have done that. It was the look that you would see in somebody who accidentally lit their house on fire. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah which I've also done. I was going to yeah. say. Yeah, that also happened that time yeah. with the grill. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. That, that also right. happened. I lit the side of my house wasp. on fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The wasp, if I would have had fire, I probably would have done it. <laughs> Uh, real quick info, though. Again, just informational. That's all we are is an informational show. You should talk to your prescriber. There are other medicinal options um, for ADHD. A lot of people only know about stimulants, um, but you should talk to your psychiatrist because they would know what's what's right for you. Um, but yeah, there are antidepressant options. While butrin is used, Stratera is used. Um, it isn't always just the the stims, and people often yeah. don't know that. There's also also alpha two adrenetic agonists that can also be used. So there are just other medicinal options. Um, make sure you're talking to your psychiatrist, to your prescriber about those. Don't I don't get know medical of any other advice research. from a podcast. Thank you. Unless the advice is talk to your doctor. Yes, mm-hmm. we, we only advise that. But yeah, rest assured, Abe, you can go directly to this therapist, exactly as Whitney said. We welcome that information. You are yep. not annoying us. We want to know. And as Nick said, you know, you don't have to come in and suggest a solution. You can just say, here's yeah. what didn't work. Yeah. Great. Thank I you. I mean, on, on a less important cluster of things, I do this all the time. When people come to me with a sound issue, they come to me with, I need you to do this. I need <laughs> yeah. you to turn up this reverb. I need you to I change yeah. this monitor this thing or what whatever. I need done. <laughs> and, it, and I always say, don't tell me what the solution is. Yeah. Just tell me the problem. Yeah. Let me Sounds work. like I, we need to do a this and that. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. no. Sh- yeah. <laughs> or I'll just fix it. Yeah. You're like, just Go on. do that thing. Yeah. <laughs> and like, it's less complicated than dealing with, with someone's mental state. But yeah. same, same idea, idea. Show up. Explain the issues that you've had in the past. And be like, hey, you know, I, I'm excited to work on this. I want to work on this. I'm willing to work on this. Here's what I've tried in the past. Uh, here are the reasons that I think they ha- that they, these things haven't worked. Uh, what you got? Yeah, I love that. And a open mind. Quick note to future therapists, interns, because a lot of you listen to the show. Um, I'm interested in using CBT a lot for ADHD. In my ADHD patients, I'm not typically using that. I was just gonna say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, like if there's other things going on, I'm like, oh, you're destroying your relationships, or like, oh, you're, you know, whatever. Yeah. And it's like there's a lot of distorted thinking. Then sure, if it's indicated. Yeah. But just for ADHD, no. I don't know that I have a CBT treatment plan in my pocket for that. No. I don't really see the match. So I'm very curious about why that was even part of Abe's experience. It sounds like it was through the EAP. So I don't know. Have you, are you what familiar is, is with that? those? EAP? Okay. Oh yeah. Go on Whitney. <laughs> Employee assistance program. Yeah. Okay. I believe. Um, typically after I having have real jobs, I, I was just going to say after are. working <laughs> at a corporate job, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I used to work at an insurance company yeah. and they would offer that. It's basically like, They'll give you maybe 10 sessions or something that the company will pay for, and they don't call it therapy. Okay. They'll be like, if you want to use your EAP, you right. can. Right. And so then you call the number, and it's like free therapy. But my opinion, very like humble, because I'm not super familiar with it, but is that it's kind of a crapshoot is what it feels like. You might get a really fresh therapist. Yeah. You might get somebody who's not very experienced. Um, a friend of mine who is very experienced – will meet with some EAP people and then roll it over into their insurance program sometimes if they can. But that's not always the case. So it's kind of frustrating because you might get 10 sessions with this person and then it's over and they might only have the wheelhouse of, yeah, I do see, I mean, that's unusual. Honestly, that is unusual, but you're not wrong because sometimes these EAP programs, depending upon how it's structured with the company or whatever, sometimes they're extremely 
I want to use the word discrete, but I mean it in a mathematical sense. They're, they're very specific, compartmentalized. It's a program. They're not made to dive into your exactly. history just like this. Because they know they don't have an unlimited amount of time with you. And so yep. they're scared of finding extra things because then they can't treat them. It's like so an they're ethical like, almost. what's going right. on? And like, I don't know. I think I need to check on my mental health. This is free. I'm going to use it. Great. I'm going to give you like a crash course in CBT. And yeah. we're just going to see what that applies to because yeah. a lot of times it does. And so like they try to keep it really broad. Huh. Yeah. But yeah, if you're doing long-term like person-centered therapy with somebody with ADHD, I'm not reaching for my CBT toolkit really at all. I don't really know a whole lot of therapists that use CBT for ADHD. I don't. I mean, I'm trying to think because even how Abe's talking about how he got distracted easily, like, yeah, that's yeah. one of the reasons I don't do it. Yeah. A, it's not indicated. Like yeah. the problems of ADHD are not cognitive distortion related yeah. they're impulse related yeah. Yeah. they lack the neural infrastructure to sit still and like they're easily distractible and there's a there's a whole lot of ancillary things that are disrupted in your life relationships get disrupted jobs so you do have to learn a lot of things but it's mostly impulse control organizational skills and like teaching self-review and self-management mm -hmm. it there can be a lot of emotional management that could be part of it i could see that yeah. maybe having a cbt component but yeah, just, I mean, I don't know, crack of the bat. I'm like, huh, that was interesting that he ran right into that yeah. with EEP. Yeah, okay. I, I, get, I get the feeling that it's probably just from a maybe less experienced or not even less experienced. Or like, like you said, just, driven. Yeah, yeah, like, hey, here's your 10 sessions. What's the yeah. most we can do with that? And typically CBT would be maybe be helpful And I get it. That. It's a one size fits mm -hmm. all for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But speak your, your mind, Abe, as, as Jacob yeah. said, don't, uh, don't be shy about it. Come right out. Tell your truth. And let the next therapist sort it out. And, yeah. and I think it's cool that you're leaving behind the EAP program. Again, for, for general audiences, though, EAPs are a real option. And oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We know we want to I tell you that. discount them. We don't know what's good or what's not. You, you, yeah. could, use your, you could use cash pay and go out and think you're going to get a flame and yon therapist. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like, right. we're all in the same pool, you know. Still so. worth trying. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I mean, always give it a shot. Yeah. You, can, you can go out there and, and try to get a beef wellington. Yeah, but you and might you just not. get a corn dog. The corn it's dog. Fancy corn dog. Fancy corn dog. Fancy corn dog. It's Where's basically what it was. Where's the stick? There yeah. was no stick. You're right. That's how you know it's fancy. You call this a steakhouse? <laughs> Gordon steak Ramsay would be furious. Send it back. It's fucking raw. All right. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back. Was that gonna... a Gordon Ramsay accent? Yeah. Of solid. course it was. That was yeah, just thank like you, him. Nick. That yeah, was, exactly. You nailed it. Suck Great. that landing. <laughs> Boundaries and relationships. I just wanted to ask a question. <laughs> Well, Nick's very protective of me, and now you know that. Yeah. Yeah. You're listening to Pod Therapy. Today's episode is brought to you by Smitty Scoop, Nathan's Hot Dog Scoop, Mason Miller, Tess Miller, Dirty B, Violet T, Paris, Team Monaco, and Oscar Swanros. And if you want to become a therapy producer, go to patreon.com slash therapy and sign up. It's really fun. Thunder rolls. Okay, so show of hands, how many of you after the last uh, show Why we, listened to Garth Brooks as soon as you got into the sh uh, oh. your car? Oh, I, I did. Not as soon, but like a few I, days later, I was like, I, I need to go check on that. As soon yeah. as I got Except in my car, he's not Garth on Brooks, Spotify. straight on. There. No. Uh, I that wish was, I knew that. I remembered that. I was like, that's why. I that was brought to. up in the Discord because yeah. a bunch of people were talking yeah. about it. And I was like, I can't. He's, good luck finding yeah. the stuff. I use yeah. Amazon Music. Yes. Yeah. And that's where you got to go yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. to get it. It's on, oh, I he's have on Prime, Apple Music. So. Is he? Yeah, he's on Apple Music. Oh. I think you just have to well, paid got... subscriptions maybe to get that. No, no, because no, I, no, I, I got paid it's, Spotify. It's, it's, and he didn't have it? No, it's, he's not, not on the Spotify. The same reason Taylor Swift for a while wasn't on there because it's something with the payout right, and okay. they were like, we're not playing with your games. And oh, we're like, I worry that Taylor Swift doesn't get paid enough. Yeah. Yeah, Garth Brooks too. I don't want him to go hungry. As mm -hmm. you should. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah, I immediately mm -hmm. did that too. They and know I, I their just value. Thunder rolls on repeat. It, it's it's oh, not no. about the money, Jim. It's about their value. They know their oh, value. You know We're all Shit. trying to find them, and like, I just got life coach. <laughs> I think my favorite. I don't know. My, one of my two favorites. My two favorite songs have got to be that summer. And um, summer loving. No, having um, a blast. Yep. Oh, Let's make next thank you. Now I can't remember the second. Happens Colin so Baton fast. Rouge. That was the other one. And, and of course, the dance. Crazy oh me. my gosh, the dance! I think the two I saddest songs ever are got to be the dance, oh and uh, uh, sometimes it snows in April by Prince. I don't I know. All right, it's a very That's Minneapolis sad, song. Now I got to make song. another note for me oh, to do in the meantime. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I've heard the dance, but it's not ringing a bell. Oh, it's a great. song. I quit country music. Well, anyway, the dance. How long? Was the longest wedding veil ever worn? 
Jacob leads off. Warren. Oh, um, boy, it's going to be some dark. Thing. Ten just... minutes. <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. In length. Uh, oh, well done, okay. well done. Okay. Um, I thought it was time, too. To save myself uh, some time in calculations, uh-huh. oh, I'll no. give you the units Great. by which we will measure. That was my next question. <laughs> That's very uh, We're going to measure in football fields. Ah. What? Oh, that really <laughs> helps. I was hoping you were going to say, like, furlongs. I was, <laughs> I was definitely on the under on this Cubits. one. Osprey wings. Cubits. Cubits. <laughs> How many knots? <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> football. I will Kamara. guess... Uh, oh. Damn! Football oh, is it? Fields? Is let me ask you one more clarifying question. Okay. Did an American write? <laughs> is it whole football fields or fractions of a football field? Mm. Uh, we're going to measure in whole football whole fields. fields. Round right. to yeah. the nearest football. Then field. I will say three. Damn! Okay. Is a veil? Over. Veil goes over the face, right? Or is it over, not over necessarily the hair? over uh, the head? Over the head. It's going to have to be it's right. Because if it's over her face, she's stepping on that shit. <laughs> it took you know? it took forty five minutes to pull <laughs> over. She's walking in right. reverse. No. Like she's no. walking no. down the She might be walking backwards, <laughs> like slowly, <laughs> just backing up. So okay, it's probably it may over have been her worn head. By Michael Jackson. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> this is ignorant blanket. All right, so I think it's my turn. And then Whitney goes last in this one. Yeah. Um, I will take. How, what'd you say? Three. I said three. Yeah, so I'll go two. All right. That gives okay. me one and two, right? That's how this works? No, that gives you two. God damn it. I keep Closest doing this wrong. without going over. I want one. Okay, one. So now I've got the gap, right? Yeah, got now you've got to one to three. One yeah. to th- I'll take One that. to 2.99. Above three nine. is ridiculous. Okay. That's just gaudy, you know? It's going to be ridiculous. Two I is know. sensible. I'm going to go four. Yeah. Okay. You stick him in there. Uh, We are all tied up, because that's a point for Whitney. Whoa. Yeah. Was it like... Five. Finally. 63. Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> 6,300 yards of veil. Are you serious? Yeah, 63 football real. fields. Tell me, what's that uh, from? In Dude, Cyprus what? in 2018. Cyprus? That's not, 18. the whole island's oh, not sorry. that Oh, sorry. There were feet. 22,843 feet. What the shit? So, yeah. Those poor people in had to In 2018? Yes. Damn, dude. Okay. Cool. How big was, uh, where are we at? So, Jim again. Yeah. How big? Wait, wait. How many feet did you say? 22,000. 22,000. Oh, he's calculating. 800. He's getting this thing 43 down. 43 feet. He wants, he wants a redo. Okay. <laughs> he's, Go he's ahead. checking it in yards. How big was the world's largest snowflake on record? Oh, they can't be that big. <laughs> Not how long was it on record. How long was it? Yeah. How Measure- large was measurement. it? What was the largest snowflake? I assume it's diameter. Unit unit of measure? Yeah, give us the yes. unit yeah. of measure. Uh, uh, Football inches. fields. Yeah, uh, <laughs> moons, <laughs> moons, Earth moons. <laughs> uh, in inches, what you got like a twelve-inch personal Actually, pizza, right? I, I joke. I'm joking about the moon. Are we counting like yeah. comets? Yeah, do comets fucking count? No, this Slightly actually fell, ice. You know, ice. Thank this, you. This fell on Everest. Earth. Okay. All right. So this is an Earth-based, an snowflake. Earth-based snowflake. <laughs> Earth-based snowflake. Yes. Yeah. All right. I believe it was Al also, Gore. <laughs> also, there it is. I didn't. I, I. I apologize. I didn't clarify that the wedding veil was also Earth-based. Ah. Okay. Yeah. That. Thank you. Yeah. That's All of these better. have been Earth-based. Yeah, so Cyprus far. Earth. Is my point not earned then? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't clarify. I'm taking that point. I'm yeah. Whitney's got a point, but also an asterisk. Yeah. That's, that's right. Just the Barry Bonds of this trivia. <laughs> All right, so in inches, I'm thinking like a personal pizza is like 12 inches. That kind of, maybe it's just a small pizza. Personal pizza, I believe. Uh, the Pizza Hut personal pizza, I believe, was 10 inches. I'm going to go 10. I want 10 inches on this. Mm. 10 inches. Okay, closest without going Jim over. wants 10 inches. I want 10 <laughs> inches yeah. in my mouth. <laughs> is that um, a drop? <laughs> <laughs> I guess 15 feels right. Okay. I think increments okay. of five are probably yeah. the right okay. way to think going about with this. That, so we got 10 and 15? Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, I don't know. He's got a pencil over there. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm, 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 writing, I'm writing down the t- time stamps. Where'd you get this abacus? <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing down something. Holy yeah. I, I just wrote down the word, or the, the numbers 2.49.0. Oh. So, so full disclosure as to what That's I just wrote down. Sure. <laughs> uh, so we have 10 inches and 15 inches? Yeah. Yes. I'll go one inch. Oh, that's smart. That, is that was smart money right we there. We have a winner, it's obviously. It's Jacob. Yeah. It is not. No oh, who way. is it? Who is it? It is Whitney. No yes! way. You might be Snowflake. Win. Whitney. <laughs> yes. Got the correct answer. No way. 
15, yeah. 15 on money. 15 Damn. inches. Damn. Oh, wow. Was, was this an artificially snowflake? made snowflake? Yeah, come on. <laughs> I want more seen, information. It was seen in Montana in 1887. Oh, oh fuck whoever said they saw <laughs> a 15 inch snowflake. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's count all the that UFOs is, too, guys. That's damn a it. big fish you know, story yeah, right some there. Some Montana asshole like, oh, man, this is a large snowflake in my life. It was about a big fish story. 15 inches. Shut up, Billy Bob. Last time you told that story was 12 inches. No, I'm serious. I swear to Christ. I saw it. It was 15 inches big. No. Nope. Big as a pizza down there in nope. the pizza hut. Yeah, I'm continuing this show under protest. Yes. <laughs> I got two that's asterisks. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's right, the asterisks. And protest. <laughs> I'm weaseling my way in there. Oh, uh, no. I, I disagree with oh, this entire funny. game. The integrity of our trivia has been questioned. <laughs> yeah. Boundaries in relationships. 1800s Montana motherfucker <laughs> yeah, saying 15 inch snowflake. In the sky. I, I, this you is know. from BuzzFeed. I trust it. No. Yeah. no I got it. It's legitimate. No way. Montana That's didn't even have it. measuring devices in the 1800s. <laughs> it may not have existed in the 1800s. Montana didn't have inches in yeah, 1800. I don't think they know did, man. I don't know. I think they were using like some kind of royal foot or something. Like the king's, like, you know, pinky. I don't think it was this. I, I just, this whole thing feels like a lie to me. <laughs> they only measured in cubits. <laughs> cubits. Boundaries in relationships. Hey, Pop Therapy, I could use some guidance on setting healthy boundaries in relationships. Because of some traumatic events in my past, I'm drawn into friendships with other people who've had similar experiences. The problem is that this quickly leads to unhealthy behavior. I had one friend that led me towards a drinking problem. Another relationship led me to steal. The list goes on. It's gotten to the point that I've more or less cut off any friends who've had a similar past to mine. The only problem is that this leaves me with friends who I affectionately call saltines. <laughs> I've tried to connect in similar ways, but I've been unable to so far connect on the same level as my past relationships. Sounds like this person's the biggest snowflake, am I right? People? Yeah, like at least 15, 15 inches. inches. <laughs> the lack of shared experiences creates a boundary that's hard to break. So, number one, is there a way to still connect with friends that have similar backgrounds, but set some healthy boundaries? Or, number two, should I instead put my focus on building deeper connections with my lovely saltines? Thanks, Pod Therapy, from Jana. Okay. Hmm. Saltines. That's funny. All right. Square crackers. Um, put a little horse saltines. rash on them. Uh, too, mm. too salty for you? Or too, too, too uh, spicy? Too spicy. <laughs> And be honest, I don't care for them. It is too much. <laughs> it's too much bread. I like yeah. buttery crackers. You know, so like I don't the ones that yeah, the clubs are good. Yeah. Give me a Ritz. Give me, give me. Well, are those the cheesy ones? No, no, that's that's just... uh, Cheez Its. I like those. I like goldfish. <laughs> okay, that's my cracker. As a cracker or as a fish? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of both. You spr- you can crush them up. You sprinkle it on there. You got both the fish. Yeah, the both. Like oyster scr- cracker. Crack- that's right. Oh, oyster crackers are great. I'll take that in some soup, some chicken noodle soup with some oyster crackers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's money right there. Mm-hmm. Not the saltines though. Those are I don't like those. I went into a, a seafood restaurant one time and they brought out oysters with oyster crackers, oh. like oysters on a half shell with oyster crackers. Okay. Mm. So what, the fuck, what the fuck are you supposed to do with I, oyster crackers? I was just thinking, with, like, with, where a, do they with go? like a whole raw oyster. Yeah, yeah. we like, got basket. We were juice. like, what? Are, we're like, what do you even do with this? The Throw waiter's like, this is my first yeah. day. <laughs> right. I don't know. Yeah. It seemed like they went together. <laughs> like, if anything, you want like some saltines or something. You want something you can put that oyster on yeah. Yeah. and then yeah. eat it. Hmm. Yeah, I prefer a saltine with my oysters because then I could stack on the uh, my horseradish laden uh, Ooh, cocktail sauce. Yeah, Ooh, yum. yeah, my very yum, yum, spicy yum. cocktail sauce. Yeah. I want I want that cracker that can just hold the oyster and my sauce on there. Sauce, yeah, <laughs> sauce. sauce. There's a W in it. My sauce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think a saltine can carry that much weight. I don't think it's load bearing. I mean, not with that attitude. No, you gotta really put them in there. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta respect the engineering. I think that goes you really just. It. I think you need a piece of toast with your oyster and your sauce. That'd well, now get all on there. Now you're getting dangerously close to a po' boy. Is that a po' boy? An oyster yeah, po' boy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Real good. Look at that Louisiana accent. Yeah. Kind of I thought real po' boys good. were exclusively shrimp. <laughs> no, no. So just what? For anything? instance, an oyster po' boy, not shrimp. So you can just call it po' boy. Yeah. A you catfish mean, po' boy, not shrimp. So, okay. But to be clear, if I if I walk into a place a and I go- A roast beef po' boy, not shrimp. So it does have to have the, the disclaimer at the front. You do have to tell me what kind of po' yeah, boy it is. Yeah, it's a type of po' boy. Okay. And then you'll tell me that what's in it in the name. Yeah. So you'll say it's a shrimp po' boy or it's an oyster po' boy. That's going to have what shrimp What makes it. it a po' boy? Oh, I think the bread, the bread and right? shape of sandwich. 
It's like a if, sub. It, if it's a, a long, yeah, like a We've sub. been over this. A Subway type sandwich. Yeah, it's a sub. Uh, but you want like for a po' boy, you want like a nice French bread. Okay. Nice crumbly French bread. Oh, that's bread. right. We went through this. Yeah, we did. Yeah. This was when you talked about sticking your dick in a baguette. Yeah, that <laughs> came back to bite me. <laughs> Really the baguette? I that yeah, day. I had a patient who did not appreciate that comment. <laughs> no said, way. You should not be listening to no pop therapy they were, at they all. They were a baker? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, they just were a person of good taste. Did not care they for that. They were personally offended. <laughs> <laughs> offended. How they dare you? They felt like it was an attack on their profession. Yeah. <laughs> I've explained to you. You will respect the baguette, sir. <laughs> Do you know how much time went into the baguette? You I will mean, respect it. You, can, you will buy it yeah. dinner. Fornicate with French bread, okay? Yeah. Not with a good baguette. <laughs> Bag- Ruin baguette it. is a French bread. I don't know. It sounded Italian to me. <laughs> I can't possibly be held. Anybody mention uh, Puerto Rico to you this week? Oh yeah, that came up. <laughs> that, did that come up? In yeah, the it showed up in the Discord. Good people in the Discord. I think the number one complaint was, "Why did the show continue without correcting Jim?" Oh, because I wanted that to happen. <laughs> because I wanted, I wanted the people, people were just upset. To flock. <laughs> I wanted the people to flock. The mob will get him. Yeah, yeah. yeah he'll figure it out. Yeah. Like they're going to show up at his house with pitchforks and yeah. torches. Yeah. Say the wrong uh, so, thing so this the is a good message to the listeners. We're yeah. not going to do your work for you. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, like, we, can't, wanna, we can't be expected to correct Jim on everything. No, if you want to ridicule Jim, you need to step up to the plate. Patreon.com yeah. Jacob slash and I therapy. have been doing it for six years. With this stuff is helping out a little bit. Yeah. But frankly, she's not pulling her weight. I'm not. I think there's enough weight over there. The, the, the mob needs to take care of business. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, the pitchforks came out. Yeah, and, yeah. good, uh, good. I've been made aware of how yeah. things work. So, so anyway, yeah. Jana, the writer. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, look on his face. Who are amazing. you talking about? Like, I think it's not like it's pronounced like, Jamaica, you Jim, idiot. Jim's like, her name is Whitney. <laughs> She's right oh, was there. Was I saying it wrong this whole time? She's right there. I told her Whitney. <laughs> Wait, what's her name again? She's right there. Her name is Jana? <laughs> Where did I get Whitney from? <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts, Jim, about just... Uh, coming from that traumatic past, traumatic yeah. events, and finding those people. Like. Yeah. So, it, okay, I, mm. I want to place a bet. I, I feel okay. that I already know what Nick's going to say. Probably. I Yeah, I, I feel that I already know because there was a way that this letter is languaged. Okay. Few things will get Nick's ears to pop up as fast oh. as, as a particular way that this thing was languaged. Okay. And so I believe. English. Yeah, the, the English bothers him. I believe the thing that you will take issue with Pulpery. is <laughs> that here's here's the fr- I'm going to reread Pulper. a sentence and I think this is what's going to get pulpery it just bothers me. <laughs> you're just wrong. One. And I want That's you to know that you're wrong. Yeah. This is not a Jim like, has a quirky. I like that Nick's getting like, away with it though. It's my favorite. Thing. Thing. Like, this is on you. <laughs> no one says it. Again. Your <laughs> problem. <laughs> Fine. Go into this on your own. Get it right. Okay, the thing that I think Nick's going to take issue with is I have I had one friend that led me towards a drinking problem. Mm, yeah. Another friend led me to steal. The list goes on. Yeah. I believe he will take issue with the, the language used in those two sentences. Would Jim be right, Nick? Probably. <laughs> but I want to hear you explain it. I know you. Oh, the thing that's going to bother you about it is you just... Dis- so, like, so there's actually two things, but that's one of I have them. one. I, okay, I know that yeah. one of the... So you have a famous saying... Uh, that he's used in many rehabs, which I, I take no issue with. It's fine. Shut the fuck up, Jim. Yeah, no. The, remember that time <laughs> he told that, that girl yeah. to shut the fuck up and she got turned on? <laughs> She's like, like Tell me again. nobody's yeah. ever talked to me like that and kept my clothes on. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I'm funny. uncomfortable. Oh, it was so great. I'm not safe. No, he has a saying where uh, people say, oh, that person was pushing my buttons. And, and so like people will say like, oh, this person, why did you behave this way? Why'd you go out and do this oh because they're pushing my buttons and and nick will be like why are you leaving your buttons out there for people to push and so he dislikes the idea that other people made you do a thing yeah and and so i think that he i think he'll understand what the writer means while Mm -hmm. also not preferring that language yeah no you're you're 100 right i got it right that's yeah that's definitely one of them and and that's I, i don't know if this is uh necessarily kind of the whole purpose or point behind the letter, but that is something that kind of stuck out to me is um, just kind of this idea of, I want to make sure writer that you are taking ownership and accountability for your part. Sure. People can facilitate an environment 
They can manipulate things around you, but your choices are always going to be your choices. Mm. And I used to use the example, because the other thing that always would kind of um, catch my attention, perk my ears up, as you said, would be when people would say things like, well, so-and-so made me mad. So-and-so mm-hmm. made me angry. Yeah. And I would, I'd really question that. It's like, wow, you're giving that person a lot of power. Yeah, that's it. Because if you're saying that they have control over anger, what does that say about your happiness? Mm-hmm. Do they have to give you power or do they have to give you happiness? Can you not be happy unless they give it to you? Right. So if we're doing it, because it, you can't have it for one emotion and not the rest. Like mm-hmm. somebody can make me angry, but then happiness is all on me. No, that's... You take ownership for all of it, right? So you can go out and key my car, but how I react to that is still going to be my choice. Yep, yep. You know, so that's that's kind of the big thing. The second thing that I was going to kind of point out to here is we form relationships based off of common interests. So uh, this is also a thing that we talked a lot about in rehabs is because when people, I, I used to say this all the time, like if you take, two addicts, alcoholics, anybody suffering with addiction, and you put them in a gym- gymnasium with a thousand people, and there's just two of them. <laughs> they'll, they'll find, they'll each, find other each other in two minutes. Yeah. What's up, man? They just, yeah. You like they to just, party? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you got just like, they yeah. just, it's just this magnetism oh, that just yeah. brings they them know. together. They look you around know? the room, they go, this guy uses. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is about you, but I like you. Something about yeah. it, he says we're going to have a good night. <laughs> yep. and, and something similar to that happened to me like two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> you look yeah. around the casino, you were like, no, no, this guy. No, no, I was the one that got seen. Oh. Uh, <laughs> like you. Somebody came up to me. <laughs> you got any? Yeah. It was yeah. like, you, you holding? You holding? <laughs> yeah. oh, of course. That's what it was. And the answer? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but so I, I, I do think though that like, okay, so if all of these things and you kind of describe them as things from your past, but yet they seem to be attracting people where it's still a common thing or a current thing. Right. So I guess the question that I would want to explore with you is, is this as far into your past as you think it is? Mm. Or are there still traits or behaviors, thinking patterns that you're still practicing that make it clear to other people that this is still who you are and that's why these people are being drawn into you. Yeah. Mm, so that may be something to take a look at. Also taking a look at, so what would be some replacements for those things? So what are some things that, you know, as you start to leave these, and I don't even know if we're clear what these unhealthy behaviors are. Drinking, drinking was okay. one and stealing. Yeah. So if, as yep. you leave these unhealthy behaviors, what are you going to be doing instead? Yeah. And, and how can we practice those things? So like I would, you know, working with, people in rehab, when they would leave treatment, I would always explain to them like, Hey, you have to understand that when you leave and you step out in the public, the people who are going to be drawn to you are still the people are the people from your past right? that still see you as this person with these qualities, these behaviors, these interests. So you're going to have to actively get involved in other areas. Yeah. And you know, I want to become, you know, um, I want to join a softball league, so I'm going to hang out with people who play softball, right? Or I'm or pickleball or whatever. And how do they react? How do they think? How do they behave? And I need to start doing all these other things yeah. to kind of start changing that. Well, think about it. Just taking this to the rehab talk for a second. Mm-hmm. If we're talking to a patient, they're like, hey, it's really important to me to still hang with the boys. And like, I still got to hang out with my friends and stuff. And we're like, the friends you used to drink with? Yeah. The friends you used to do drugs with? Yeah. Those guys. The friends you used to steal shit with? Yeah. Those guys. But I'm going to draw boundaries. We're like, yeah, no, you're not, you idiot. You because, sure are. Yeah, people, places, Here. and things, man. Like, we got to talk about that. It's time yeah. for you to start a new life. Like, I'm on Team Saltines. <laughs> like, so, honestly, I think you're naive if you think you're going to redraw boundaries with people that you're using with. So here's the other thing. Okay. So, two. One of two things will happen when somebody leaves and they have that philosophy, I'm going to still hang out with these people, but I'm not going to do the things that they do or I'm going to have healthy boundaries. (laughs) That's one thing that's going to happen. (laughs) You know, if you hang out in the barbershop, you're going to get a haircut. There it is. Uh, And if that doesn't happen, the other thing that would happen is just as bad 
which is that you're going to be bored. Yeah. yeah. What the hell are you going to do with those people? Well, nothing yeah. will chase away your friends faster than recovery. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so so like, like you will be abandoned by yeah. them at some point <laughs> because you're boring and you're a square. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and so like, it's like it's what, like if you have the if you have the willpower to do that, which not many people do. That, that's I mean I, I don't know that I do, uh, but like if you have the willpower to do that, yeah, your friends are going to be like, we're all sitting around drinking. Yeah. We're all doing these things. And you're gonna are you enjoying yourself? Hang out in the car, right? Yeah, just yeah. the DD the whole time. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Or you're gonna be the sober person around a bunch of people who are drinking. Yeah, which, which is, is or the getaway driver oh, when they're stealing unpleasant. shit, right? Apparently, yeah. <laughs> like, so I won't steal, but my friends will, and I yeah. guess I'll just drive the car. So I mean, those are really the only two options that are going to happen, and neither of them are good. Right. One right. of them, you go back into those old behaviors. The second one, you're bored. Yeah, and it's not going to be enjoyable for you. And I think one of the things that happens for a lot of people is they have feelings of guilt if they oh, don't. for leaving behind. Yeah. And so, friends, yeah. and so I, I've heard people say this all the time. It's like, I feel like I'm leaving my friends behind. Yeah. And I have to reframe that and say like, well, no, you're not leaving them behind. They're choosing not to follow. Right. You know, you're just, you're, you've been walking on this path with them for so many years and now there's a fork in the road. Yeah. And you have to make a decision that's best for you. And so you have to say like, okay, well, I'm going this way. Mm -hmm. I wish you guys, I, I hope you guys come with me. But if you don't, this is where we part. Right. You know, and so it's not like you're saying like, I'm better than you no. or, you know, fuck you guys. It's, it's all your fault. No. We're not blaming them. We're not even judging them if they choose to continue down that path. Right. That's their right. They can do that. But you have to make a decision and you have to say like, okay, well, what's best for me is down this way. And I'm sorry that this happens, but this is how it goes. Yes. And by the way, this doesn't happen just in recovery. This happens in life in yes, general. Absolutely. Me moving to Las Vegas. Right. You know, I had a lot of friends in Iowa and it was wonderful, but I had this opportunity. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, well, I'm, I have Our to take this opportunity. Yeah. This it. is, this is where my path is taking me yeah. now. And so it's not a rejection of you. It's exactly. a rejection of Iowa. You just happen to still live there. Yeah. I've gone somewhere. I was going to say, was right. the opportunity pod there? <laughs> Yes, it was. That's it, that why was I moved to Iowa. <laughs> yeah. That's why he's yeah. still here, yeah. exclusively <laughs> for podcasting. Right. right, exactly. Um, what it, does that apply to? If people are, what if both people are like in recovery? Is that still a really high risk? If they're doing, if so, they're on the path of recovery, so or, yeah, stay in recovery and folk, and then or... make friendships in recovery. Because she, okay. yeah, I'm trying to like understand since they are vague about what their past trauma is even though they're saying what their more behaviors recent are. past yeah. behaviors were um because it's like is there still a way to connect with friends that have similar backgrounds and i guess not knowing what that means means it's hard to say to that but mm -hmm. i'm imagining if it were you know something i'm a like big fan so use. i i do appreciate this because we did see this a lot in rehabs and you do see this in general that there is a sense of kinship of shared experience. Mm -hmm. Of course, there yeah. is sure. human trait. But like in drug abuse, there's people that have done time together, people that were in gangs together, people who did crimes together, people who used together. And there is a deep camaraderie. But military. Right. Take yeah. that too. People, yeah. And so I think there's a difference between fellowshipping or friendshipping with people that are active in a lifestyle that you relate to or people that are exiting that lifestyle, mm -hmm. reformed out of that lifestyle or whatever. So I like that. And this is something that we would do in recovery or in rehabs. We would take, like, let's say we'd have somebody who came out of gangs or, you know, came out of a certain lifestyle. We would find somebody strong in recovery, like Junior was one of our favorite mm -hmm. guys. This guy was an ex-gang member, uh, but he's one of the strongest, most like just powerful speakers. He had a super reformed life, but he was a full-time gang-banging thug and he mm -hmm. was dangerous and he had done a lot of bad things in the world. Yeah. But that made him a huge support for people because he could relate to them in mm -hmm. such a deep way. Yeah. But he was on the path. And so that brought these people out of it so they could have friendship. And he would introduce them to other people from that lifestyle who are also into recovery now. Okay. So I, I'm a fan of finding your people on the path, not in Iowa, for God's sake. <laughs> but here's, here's the Iowa's other thing. a metaphor for everything. Here's the other thing, though, too. Is like I've, I've done a lot of work with couples who had been okay. using together oh, that's really and then hard. now enter into wow. recovery yeah, together. That's really hard. And so the analogy that I always use is like, you, you have to understand that like, this is a complete lifestyle shift for you and you have to learn all new skills. Right. And 
it's almost like two toddlers learning to walk. Mm. They can't hold each other's hands. Yeah. Oh, good point. Right? Because I like when, that metaphor. I'm going to steal yeah, that. When one falls over, what's the other one? I've never do? heard you use right? that. I've oh. never also been with you when you've done couples work in True. recovery. So. Yeah. yeah. It's like the one population we have not co-treated. Correct. That's interesting. Yeah. Damn, that's but a really good yeah, one. Yeah, so like it, when one falls, the other one's going to fall. So yeah. it's like if you're in early recovery, you don't hold the hand of somebody who's learning to lo- walk with you. Right. You hold the hand of somebody who's been walking for years. Yeah. So that's where Junior was beneficial. Yeah. Is because Junior had people above him. Right. That, was, that were holding his hand. Yes. And, and so he could hold other people people's hand because if they start to fall, he's got it. Yes. He's not going to fall. He's, he's fine. You know? And so, uh, if you're, if that is the situation and they're going into recovery together or they're going through that path, that's great. They can support each other, but they need to find their own support outside of that relationship. Yeah. So I, I mean, I like the, the saltines, you know, the people that you're saying, like, they don't have that life that you've been through but you don't feel the same deep kinship. And sometimes you do feel other than them, right? Because they just haven't been through it. And you're kind of like, oh man, you're kind of boring or you're upper crust or whatever. Like I've lived this other life. Like we used to make fun of people like you, Mm -hmm. but now I'm a grown up, and I feel like it's good to hang out with you. You seem fine, but you also don't know a whole part of me that you wouldn't relate to. And you'd probably be horrified by, I get it. Like, you know, I lived on the streets, you know, you know, I was in gangs, you know, rough and tumble kid. Oh, is this a character you're playing? This yeah, is you. I'm okay. working at. I was going to say, to I thought for the Jim sharks. was the saltine. <laughs> yeah, I've been working on a lot of my dance clap. It's, it's getting really good. <laughs> Jim was in a gang called the Damn Rascals, <laughs> <laughs> the Little Rascals, <laughs> the He-Man Woman Haters Club. We were very aggressive, but no, I get that. I mean, shared experiences matter a lot. Yeah, I was thinking, and this may, I may be totally off with this, but with the saltines. Sometimes people who portray themselves as really boring might be kind of hiding a lot of other shit that they've been through. And I'm not saying like they are and you should go dig for that. But I'm just saying a lot of people can present for quite a while as something else um, until they're fully comfortable and you've built that relationship. And I'm saying that to say continue to work on those relationships because that was what your second question was how should i just focus on building a deeper connection with them and Mm. might as well see what happens i mean where's the harm i guess you know yeah i agree and i think the other part with that too is if if that's what you want to do is build that deeper connection what is the connection Mm. and kind of think about that like what are the things that you have in common with them um and how can you build off of that or even if you don't have a whole lot in common what can you learn from each other? Mm-hmm. And maybe that's the thing. Like you just kind of like want to learn more. You're just curious. You yep. want to be a part of that. You yeah. Know? So, be yeah. curious. Like they might that. surprise you. I've had people yeah. around who have been like, I think for years even, it was kind of like an adjacent friend who I had spent some time with. And I had finally opened up to her about something from my past and my family. And she was like, oh, my gosh, I would have never known that. And I'm like, well, you never asked. (laughs) That's okay. (laughs) So you never know. You never know. I'm sure because out of her experiences, she shared was like more of a Jacob type character. (laughs) (laughs) Clean um, cut, Mormon. Yeah. 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 Mm, Long hair. God (laughs) God fearing. (laughs) Ten commandments on the bookshelf. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But because of that, they had a lot of stories and and things to share like I've been through all this stuff and I would listen because that's a big personality but like if you don't take the time to really get to know the people around you they may have some relatability there that you're overseeing Mm -hmm. I don't know one thing I really like about this question and it's I think it's fresh in this way we don't get to talk enough about how being intentional with your social circle is a life skill yeah. And, and I think especially coming from rehabs and things like that, like we've oh we've tried gosh, to help people yes. see you're not being disloyal to put yourself first and to choose to surround yourself with people you would like to be like. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want what they have, you have to be where they are and, and, and surround yourself with quality humans. And it's OK. That's not, you know, you being prudish to not choose to hang out with people that would like to do things that you know are self-sabotaging to you and unhealthy for you and that you're tempted to continue to, you know, destroy your life. So I like this. I think it's a really good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with good people. All right. We are reached the uh, end of the show. Who's winning in trivia? Did we? Me. Whitney Whitney won. won. With my asterisks. Yeah, we don't agree. (laughs) Double asterisks. There's a protest. Yeah, everything is. (laughs) There are pitchforks outside. There's a writer's strike. (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm against this. As we wrap up the show, we do want to remind you. Oh, by the way, Junior, since we mentioned him, we name-checked him. 
patreon.com slash therapy, go into the interviews tab, uh, or just go to the starting post. There's a whole drop down of a directory of everything we've ever done. Ooh, uh, Nick did an interview look. with Junior, yes. and, and it's wide ranging as all things are with him, but he's awesome. He's just yeah. a colleague we have always liked. Really great guy, salt of the earth. By the way, Nick, uh, when you were researching that snowflake that Whitney uh, guessed, <laughs> yes, has been working. <laughs> Correct. Uh, he blinked did, did fifteen you happen times. To see, did you happen to see the uh, the the thickness? Yeah, of the snowflake eight as well. Inches. Yeah, in, the in girth. Inches, eight inches. Uh, 20 centimeters thick. That's not oh, a goddamn well, snowflake. That's a snowball. That's a <laughs> snowball. <laughs> that's a freaking dumbbell. Yeah. This is not acceptable. I mean, that, I will that, say, I will say, entire. Is, is it I, this is not. This is not an attack on Nick. No. Because anytime I do a fucking Google search of like world's biggest snowflake, this snowflake, this story comes up. Oh, okay. So this, this is myth, out there. This, this myth, myth from Thank 1800s you. Montana <laughs> straight up comes lie. up. Yeah, but yeah, according I just to know Guinness, my myth history. Yeah. It was uh, really 15 well. inches, yeah, this bullshit. 38 centimeters wide, and 8 tire inches, fell from 20 centimeters sky. thick. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not many people know this, but uh, the man who discovered it did catch it on his tongue. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. Was... Then I'd believe him. You show me the smashed face of this <laughs> yes. man. That's the thing. Is like this thing is not going to float to the earth. Hell no, it's not. <laughs> you don't know snowflakes. All right. You know might. what? <laughs> New challenge. We Unless have... it's attached to a parachute. We have <laughs> legit physicists that listen to the show. Alec, I'm talking to you. Calculate the weight of this object. I want to know if it's a crystalline structure, which is a huge, generous offering. Yeah, to this yeah. Man. I don't think it's a crystalline structure. Okay, trying to take Assuming my trophy away. Assuming it's a crystalline structure. <laughs> yeah. Trying to take my so trophy away. One of the dimensions, away. 15 uh, inches uh, by 8 inches. Down. Yeah. The first time we have a woman on the show. In I know. Like, we it's can't just be smart. All no. chaos. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to know Based the, on I Whitney's, know the uh, defense just now. Yeah. You would you would think that she thinks that uh, that she knew the size yeah. of the snowflake. It was a little specific though, wasn't it? She, she kind of just know oh, it. fucking she nailed it. It was fifteen. A little <laughs> specific. I was like fifteen, then I watched oh. how how quickly yeah. Nick's eyes yeah, yeah, fluttered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, fourteen point nine. You know what? Fifteen. No, 15. That's rounded, that's rounded to, 15. to fifteen on this one. I'm a body language expert. Yeah, that's how she got it. fifteen. That's inches. my secret. <laughs> yeah. Staring at Nick's face, figured it out. I, I believe all this. <laughs> Alec, get me the measurement in the Discord, please. Uh, attach it to this episode. I need to know. Know what the weight of this yeah, you're not mythical doing any, object is. You're not is. doing anything productive you're not right now. solving the mysteries of quantum <laughs> physics right now. Get on this right Get away. on this. <laughs> Stop. Stop. We better have this in the first five minutes of this episode being aired. As we wrap up the show, we want to remind you, you can sign up at patreon.com slash therapy. You can get the extended show ad-free a day early, as well as enjoy our live chat and Discord community, including Alex Answer, which will be posted, I'm sure. Uh, and weekly deep dives, interviews, skill shares, and research roundups and rants. This week... Uh, we had a deep dive on superstition. We sure did. That was a good one. So that came out on Monday. Uh, the song did Very make an appearance. Right. As much of it as I could legally post. Riding <laughs> on the wall. Uh, but yeah. What is the Thank deal you. on that? How long can something go before it's I don't illegal? know. I think it's like eight seconds. I you should have really. called That's Jacob on this. I think, I, I think it's as long as you can ride a bull in the rodeo. I believe it is 15 inches. How long music that can is. be before it is classified? Yep, you are like, looking are into his eyes. Are we talking about the bull? Or are we talking about <laughs> <laughs> the bull? <laughs> that bull can be 15 inches easy, bud. <laughs> <laughs> This show is a fucking joke. This show is that joke. You <laughs> are the new world's biggest snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, sponsors. All right, man, we had a moment there, too. We were like, we're going to be legitimate. <laughs> nope. Them days is over. They were short-lived. All right, we want to thank new folks supporting the show at patreon.com slash therapy. Uh, welcome, new Therapod, Matt Glawacki. I would say Glowicky. Glowicky. There's not an I. Glowacky. It's Glowacky. Mm, Glowicky. Whatever. I call him Matt. Yeah, just Matt. Matt G. And we have a new, old, new again, Thera producer, Dan Martin. Welcome back, Dan. Right. Right. Longtime friend of the show. Want to thank our Thera partner, Dirty B, and our bosses, the mysterious and shrouded Illuminati members of the fan club, the Thera producers. Thank you, Jake Schneider, Robert Brownie Jr. Mint, Smitty Scoop, Ben Dawn, Judy Schneider, Kayla Lansbury, Doctor and Mr. Hot Dog Scoop, Malia, Leon Kassab, Cindy Ash, Mason Miller, Richard Macy, Carolyn Albert, Kevin Chamberlain, Tess Miller, Sammy Scoop, Ben Stanley slapping your face, Sarah Smith, Adam Hathaway, Byler T, University Jeff, Mike Helm, Myra, Paris, Samantha Cohn, Darren Cunningham, Lib, Team Monaco, Thunder, Cougar, Falcon, Scoop, Matt and Lisa Tangeman, hey 
Oscar Swan Rose, a sunny boy, Slurpee Kaye, motherfucker, Sandra McWaffle, and welcome back, Dan Martin. If you'd like to hear this episode uncut and unedited, and why wouldn't you, and enjoy our spontaneous side projects, go to patreon.com slash therapy, and thank you for supporting mental health. That's all the time we got for this week's session. I want to thank our landlords, Matt Mattingly's Ice Cream Social Podcast, and thanks to those of you who contributed to our show today. We really appreciate it. Remember, pod therapy isn't something to keep all to yourself. Share the episode. Tag us on the socials when you do. It's at Pod Therapy Guys on Instagram and Twitter slash Pod Therapy on Facebook. And don't forget about the goodies at patreon.com slash therapy. And if you want to submit a question to the show, ask anonymously at podtherapy.net or email us at podtherapyguys at gmail.com. I'm Nick Tangeman. Uh, I'm you Whitney. Go. I'm a 15-inch <laughs> snowflake. Oh. Hey, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, and we'll Why see if you're playing that next week. <laughs> well, I'll take all comers. <laughs> all comers. All comers. <laughs> ah, burn this show to the ground.